All right, guys, afternoon. It's Friday afternoon. About that temp there, or just uh, about 72. And uh, again, uh, thanks to a couple guys uh, who made some more suggestions to me last night. Um, I did go this morning and uh, I picked up some shims. We got some, uh, these are 16th inch, uh, 3 8 shims, 16th, yeah, 16 thick with 3 8 uh, slot in them, and these are 8th inch. And this is what I came up with. My bolts are nice and tight on this fender. This was the only one that was screwing with me. Um, everything is almost level. This did pop back in, so I will have to yank that with a slide hammer just a touch. And uh, this corner needs to go down just a touch, but I'll tweak that. Um, I'm going to shut the hood here. Uh, one suggestion was made to me to uh, shim the hood uh, hinge down, and it'll bring the back corner of this hood down. I tried it, and that did not do the trick for me, so I'm going to live with it. Um, it'd be been cool if it did, but... Uh, you know, we're pretty close. It's as good as it was before. And the other thing, I don't know why I thought about this. The hood's actually a little bit forward here. There's no way other than to uh, unbolt the uh, latch and slide it back to get rid of that. So we may do that real quick. This side's good. All my gaps are good. I double checked all my fasteners on this side. Everything's nice and tight, tight. Um, body lines match. This side's uh, real darn close as far as uh, as that, but the gap is all sweet all the way down. We're, we're rocking a quarter inch gap all the way down, maybe a touch bigger at the bottom. And uh, same thing over here. We're rocking about a quarter inch gap all the way down until you get to the bottom, and it just opens up a teeny tiny bit. So, good to go. Uh, next order of business is lunch, but uh, after that, uh, I'm going to wipe this panel down. I'm going to mask the adjacent panels, and I'm going to take some 320, get the overspray off of that. Um, after I wipe it down, make sure there's no grease or anything on it. I'm going to get that overspray off, and uh, I'm going to take a block with some 320 and check for my highs and lows. I'm pretty sure, I can't remember if it was this side, one of these sides had a dimple in it right here, and I know it has a boink right here. Okay. Uh, anything that's down in this wheel lip area, I'm not going to mess with. It's behind the flare. Same thing over here. Oh, this is the side with the doink in it. It's right there. You can see it, actually. And then this one also had damage inside this wheel opening, which will be covered. All this appears good, um, but we'll double check it. You know, we're going to block it out to make sure that it's right. So. All right, guys, I'll, uh, I'll hook back up with you here in a couple minutes, and we'll see what's going on. Okay, guys, uh, I've got the hood up, so when I sand on this, I don't run a risk of tapping that edge. And I put some 2-inch tape on the door and a little on the headlight. I could have just as easily popped the headlight out, but for now, that is what it is. Um, we're going to use the 6-inch DynaBraid uh, finish sander and uh, some 320. I've got an interface pad on it, so it's not going to dig in. I just want to get this overspray off. That's all my goal is here. And then I'm going to take a block and try and find any uh, spots that need body work. <laughs>
Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. But it's got a high spot right here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give this probably a little tap with the body hammer and knock that down into a little low spot. That's not the hammer I want. There we go. sucks about this is that's at the top of the fender and it's loose anyway <laughs> so there's not a whole hell of a lot I can do about it to be the end guys back, huh? Just basically going over this by hand here to see if I come across anything. Because uh, I am going to 2K prime this. I'm using my uh, soft block with the gray, half gray, half black. use a little bit longer block but I think I'm going to stick with this. The main goal right now is to get any over spray off the outside of this because the outside of this feather was not scuffed. And if it wasn't scuffed, even though it seems like it's going to stick, it won't. It'll eventually come off. Another reason for 320 sanding this, even though that's got like an eco primer on it, usually there's dust nibs in it. So that's one less thing I want to have in my paint. Is more dirt. I have enough dirt in my own. right here just to get the overspray off of it. And so far the only thing I'm seeing that's going to be a problem is right up in this area. I got a high spot here and a low spot here. And if I get 2K primer on this and uh, start blocking it out and find something else, I can always put a little glaze over it. Not a problem. You guys can see what the hell I'm doing.
Let me let that one fly, because that will be right at the edge of the fender flare. side of this but uh, for what minimal over spray actually got on it I think we're going to be just fine so far that's looking pretty decent use my red scotch brake to uh, get the stuff out of that little crease there if there's any over spray on that Too bad though. Just going around these edges and getting that last little bit that the sandpaper is not getting too well. And I don't want to keep sanding up by these top edges with uh, a block because all it's going to do is keep exposing more bare steel. overspray off. I'm going to give you guys a look-see here at how this is going and then I'll bring you back when we're doing a little body work because this is just going to take quite a while. We already got 13 minutes of it. You can still see a little fuzz of uh, overspray on there and some up in here so we're going to get all that cut out and I'll bring you back when I'm uh, doing a different process here. This is going to get old just staring here watching this. So see you in a all right, guys. Um, first clip was getting all the uh, overspray off of these. I took some 320 and uh, blocked out by hand along these areas to make sure there was no messed up spots. You know, even up here. Um, and we knew there was a low spot in here, and there was a high spot here that I tapped in. That's got a wipe of glaze on it. Actually, second wipe of glaze because it didn't come out on the first. There was a little boink there that's got some on it. There was actually a high spot here and a low spot here when I blocked it. So I wipe, put a wipe on that. And there's a spot here that I didn't know was as big as it was. It goes from this body line probably all the way down to there. But it's very minor. It's not deep. Um, so again, we're not pulling it. We're just filling it. It's so tiny. And... Uh, got a few little ripples in here but nothing to speak of I think the primer uh, will make that block out so it's not wavy so when this cures we're gonna block this again with 180 and then go over this whole uh, thing with some 320 again and then uh, I'm probably gonna lock this down with the epoxy um, because I'm getting so many bare metal spaces I may change my mind on that because I do have the uh, MP42K direct to metal primer. Um, just depends on how big they are. We'll see. There's always a debate about that and I change my mind every time I do it. So um, I'm going to do a quick video uh, for a YouTube user here. We'll put some information in here for you. Kind of a, not a how-to, but maybe some tools you might want to look into getting if you're just starting out. 
um, to do body work. Um, I'll show you what's in my box first and then kind of point out things that I think are definitely of value. And the first things first, I have this drawer here and I have assorted blocks. This is Duroblock brand. Um, I like these different sizes. I think this is an 11 and a half inch or something like that. Um, this came in like a six pack and it comes with that. Two of those, the round block and that little rectangle block and um, this guy right here. And I have other various assorted ones, uh, but blocks are a must. You can't do all your sanding for every application with a DA sander, but I suggest you own one. I don't care whose you buy. Um, I have several. Uh, a good inexpensive one is this guy right here. That's an Ingersoll Rand. I've had that for probably 15 years, 10 years. It's never let me down. Um, I don't use it every day, but I use it a lot. That thing's got some miles on it, and the only thing I've ever done to it is change the pad on it. So that's something that you probably want to look into if you're starting out. Um, I mean, various sandpapers for sure. I mean, I have. Uh, this is board paper, so this will go on your blocks for dry sanding. I have 80, 180, 320. Same thing with the DA discs, except I think I have a roll of 220 in here, but I have 80, 180, 220, 320. Uh, those are all things you might want to have um, if you're doing any kind of metal work. I have a million other things in here, you know, as far as grinders are concerned. I have a big uh, four inch grinder here with a 24 or a 36 grit disc on them. Various three inch grinders with the roll lock type discs with 24 and 36 grit to rough up uh, metal or to uh, strip paint to pull dents um, with a stud welder. Um, wire wheels of different types on these little die grinders. Those are Harbor Freight. I've had them for a long time and they work just fine for occasional use. Um, and for when they're on sale for 10 bucks a piece, I consider them disposable. So as far as hand tools to get started, you know, those sort of things. Um, other helpful items. I'd be amiss if I didn't uh, mention those two body hammers there. You can buy a cheap set of hammers and dollies at, uh, you know, Harbor Freight or something like that. You can buy them online. Um, you can probably get them at AutoZone. I don't know. Um, those are fairly expensive uh, hammers. Those are Martin hammers. But uh, you can get a lot less expensive for starting out, and they work good. Um, I don't have a whole dolly set. All I have is this teardrop dolly. And I have this flat piece of aluminum that I use sometimes. So those are tools, you know, for uh, knocking down your high spots uh, when you're pulling out a dent with a stud welder. Um, stud welder is something else for pulling dents that you probably, uh, you don't have to have it, you know, but if you can't get behind a panel, you know, say you got a dent in the middle of this fender, well, there's an inner panel on that and you can't get back there because um, it's double sided. So you know, you would grind off the area where the where the dent would be and uh, weld your pins to that and pull on them and then tap down on a high spot around there. Of course, that's imaginary because I don't have a dent to show you. But, uh, I mean, various grits of uh, sandpaper um, for my different sanders. We have a real mess going on. Hang on, guys. I also have another thing to mention, that cheapy temp gun to check for uh, what temperature your panels are. Um, if they're below 60 to 65 degrees, don't paint them. You'll uh, have less than desirable results. But these are discs um, for the little angle grinders. You know, got two different kinds of those. Uh, these are 400 grit uh, Velcro back to go on the DA sander. 
as well as um, these guys right here, 800 grit or 600, one of the two, for doing a blend panel, just uh, scuffing it up. Nitrile gloves, not latex gloves, but nitrile gloves for working with solvents. Uh, latex gloves will disintegrate the minute solvents touch them. Maybe some uh, trim removal tools. These are cheapy ones. I think these are Harbor Freight, maybe five bucks um, for removing trim retainers or uh, wedging behind panels. They're plastic. They don't tear up your paint. Um, I have this kind too that's metal, but uh, you got to be more careful with that. Um, I think I've showed you all the drawers on that. Uh, I mean, I kind of think everything's necessary, but those those things will get you by. Definitely, if you're going to run any air tools, um, at least a 30-gallon air compressor, but that's never going to keep up with most spray guns. That's a big two-stage air compressor. I mean, something that's going to put out some cubic feet per minute. Um, that's definitely something to have. But, uh, I mean, you need your fillers. That's a glazing putty uh, to fill in sand scratches and pinholes after you've sanded a filler like this which is just a lightweight stain resistant body filler that'd be uh, probably your first step and uh, let me get my keys I gotta open up a cabinet that's locked here I'm gonna give you some more ideas on some of the things I guess that I use day to day I've done this video before but you know so if you guys have seen it I'm sorry but I just wanted to kinda answer a question that I got last night Um, here we go. If you're doing welding, after you grind your welds down through a glass or some other type of fiberglass filler to go over it because it's water resistant, waterproof. Um, that one claims waterproof, strong waterproof. That goes over your welds and then you uh, make sure that area is low enough that you have room to put your uh, lightweight filler in there and then you can skim it with some glazing putty to get your finish out. Um, other things, I mean, I've got a dozen spray guns here um, of all different flavors, but uh, if I were gonna recommend a gun to start out with for somebody who's never painted, and I think this is a pretty, uh, pretty decent gun, I've had it forever. That's a Develbus Finish Line Gun 3. I think they've got the Finish Line 4 now or something. But you can buy these in a kit where you get a couple of them, or even the starting line ones by Devilbus. They're fine for starting out and learning. Um, 1.3 tip for uh, base coat and clear coat. Probably somewhere between a 1.8 and maybe as small as a 1.5 you can get away with, but a 1.8 is better for primer. Um, so that gun will do you. I think I paid 100 bucks for that about 13 years ago, 12 years ago. And then, uh, I don't know what else to, to show you, you know, kind of the bare bones essential stuff as far as things go. I've showed you a lot of that. Um, yeah, I don't see anything else in there that grabs me, but, um, of course, you're, you know, if you're going to be painting, you're going to need some form of primer that you can sand. I don't recommend the spray can stuff, but that doesn't mean you can't use it because it will work. Uh, it just doesn't hold out as long, but I use this one right here. Um, you can choose your own brand. This is the brand I like. If you want a decent rattle can primer that fills well, I like this U-Pole High Number 5. That's a pretty high build 1K primer, but again, that's... Uh, that's going to shrink forever, so your holdout on your scratch uh, won't be as nice as it will be with something like that. So those are some of your items, and uh, you know, for a little more advanced type stuff, like for pulling your dents. Um, a stud welder, or I have this machine right here. 
very expensive. This is probably not a beginner machine um, unless you found one on your local uh, Craigslist or eBay that was real cheap. Um, that's what I use. It's got a weldable electrode here that you can pull out on your dent with while you beat down the high spot. So there's one thing. I think an essential for pretty much anybody uh, work and things like that if you're doing rust repair especially on older vehicles you gotta have a decent MIG welder this is a 220 unit but you can easily get away with a 110 unit with uh, 023 wire the smaller wire for welding your sheet metal um, this is a little bit nicer because you can really fine-tune the heat on it and the wire speed where some of the the lesser expensive 110 welders have like heat ranges A, B, C, D, you know whatever and wire speed may be infinitely adjustable, I don't know. And to go hand in hand with that, a uh, auto darkening welding helmet. Um, you can get away with a non auto darkening one, but a decent, that one was like a hundred bucks. And I've had it for like four years, it's been fine. Um, maybe some cordless tools too are nice to have. Um, I mean, I have an impact driver here and I have a, a screw gun and things like that. But, uh, yeah, those are kind of the basics of the things that uh, I like to uh, kind of have on hand. Um, you know, I have my paper tree. I have uh, lots of masking tape. I mean, we use two inch tape and we use one or three quarter inch tape. So here's, you know, here's your two inch tape. That's something definitely to have three quarter inch tape must have sorry for the shaky cam guys red scotch bright pads uh, for doing um, scuffing paint that you're going to put base coat over or primer gray scotch bright pads which are a finer grit probably like 600 grit um, for doing your blend area that you're just going to put clear over most likely or have just a little bit of base onto I suggest tack cloths um, some people don't like them that's fine too to pick up the lint or anything that's fallen on your panel before you paint Let's see what else, what else, what else. I think those are the most important things. You know, I may have left something out. I'm kind of doing this off the cuff. Um, most important tool you need when you're painting, respirator. Don't paint without a respirator. In fact, don't sand body filler without a dust mask either. Um, you know, you have the throwaway kind. I use my old one uh, respirators for sanding body filler. I have a brand new one here, never been opened, but it will be for this job. Um, those last 30 days from the day you cut the seal on the bag. After 30 days, that respirator is done. Either demote it to sanding body filler or dust type applications. Do not use it for painting. Get yourself a brand new one because the, the carbon filter in those is done after 30 days. Always store it in the Ziploc bag or a Tupperware or something so air cannot get in it or it will be dead faster. You will know when it's dead because you will have a screaming headache after you paint. So that's kind of my quickie things you might need help. Why don't we throw some clamps in there too if you're welding. Um, those are important things. If you're sanding body filler or primer, but especially primer, guide coat. Or you can use a uh, an opposing color uh, primer over the area you prime. So when you sand that, you'll just mist that over it and you block it out with your sandpaper and you will see little specks of the opposite color that sit in your low spots so you know when to stop sanding. That will also sit in your sand scratches. So keep sanding until it's gone. And guys, 
just follow along with what I do. I'm trying to give you an idea of what to use and what to have. But just because I use it doesn't mean you have to have it. Um, you can always get by with less. You just need to get out there and you know pick up a couple items. You'll realize what you don't have by watching videos and uh, asking questions about you know what tool did you use to do that. I don't seem to have that tool or so on and so forth. So, you know, stay tuned, keep watching guys, and uh, you'll pick up the stuff you need to have. But uh, that's kind of my, uh, my quick bare essentials list. So, hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Thanks. Okay, guys, end of the day here. Oh, we got about 70 degrees still in the shop, 72. And uh, I got primer on this stuff. I apologize for not turning the camera on. It's just been one of those days. And we had some body work in here. We'll see. We got three coats of uh, MP4 2K primer on there, which isn't a super high build, but it's decent build. And then we had a spot there, a little area there, and then another one right here. And uh, a little waviness along this top, but nothing uh, that I don't think the primer won't take care of. If it really pisses me off, I'll feather fill it. But uh, that's where we're at for now. Um, I did not prime underneath. We're just going to scuff that and seal it along with the outside of the fender. Denib the dust turds that fall into the sealer and we're going to shoot it. And uh, of course we're not going to shoot it with uh, two by fours and bed sheets sitting on top of it, but that's good enough for primer. Good enough for the girls that ride in this truck. So, turned out pretty good so far. We'll see how that blocks out. Um, I may or may not do it tomorrow because allegedly tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's adventure is this box of goodies right here, maybe. I don't know if that'll focus. Uh, got some strobe lights going in a couple of Suburbans. So we'll see if those uh, come tomorrow. Um, I was supposed to go look at a truck with my buddy tomorrow uh, off of Craigslist. A newer uh, Silverado, maybe 06 or 03 or something with like 30,000 miles on it. Found it on Craigslist. So we were supposed to go do that and he told the guy he was coming. Then the guy, uh, he called him and said, well, uh, let's, uh, let's shoot for Sunday. And the guy... Uh, said, oh, somebody already stopped and uh, took the truck, which is kind of shady, but, you know, sometimes money talks, bullshit walks, so uh, hopefully we'll, that uh, will work out and we'll get to go look at that truck. We'll see. Um, it's a pretty good deal for uh, 15 grand for a, a loaded Silverado 4x4 uh, extended cab with uh, 29,000 miles on it, so we'll see. So that's what we got going for now, and uh, we're going to get back out here in the morning and either be working on strobe light kit, and if that's not the case, we're going to be blocking this primer, um, hopefully. It should stay about 70 degrees in here for uh, three or four hours, maybe down in the 60s, but uh, it takes several hours for the temp to drop in here, so it takes a long time to get it warm, and I figured it took me all day to get it this warm in here and, and stabilize, so... We're just going to let it fly, so I'm taking my sealer home so I can have that in the house in my lunchbox, and that's it. So, we'll get this uploaded for you guys. Uh, have a good night. Hey guys, it is Saturday morning, and uh, I got a video that's going to go up before this, uh, or maybe attached to this, of me uh, getting these fenders um, primed up. Uh, not actually priming them, but after they were primed the first time. And uh, I actually had two little ripples there. One here after I blocked it out, and another one over here, and then a little tiny one on the other side. So I put three coats on it yesterday, let it set overnight, blocked it with 320, and uh, I had one little dimple in here that I blocked it out, but I cut into the uh, to the e-coat that was originally on the fender, and then 
over here I had a little uh, little low spot right at the edge, nothing big. So I'm priming this whole area again and stepping my primer in toward the middle. So my last coat will just be over the middle. I got one little bare metal spot I nipped down there, which I'll just put a little primer over that. But uh, this whole fender's been blocked in 321s. And uh, after this, I'll let this set. I'm gonna put that infrared light on it for 20 minutes aside. And then we'll block this out with 400 wet and 600 wet. We should be able to get it. So we'll do a little uh, stunt prime in here real quick. We got 50% humidity and about 75 degrees in here. Hang on a second. some reducer in here but no big deal we're just gonna block this down and uh, get this taken care of um, in a couple hours uh, by the time I cure this with the infrared so as soon as this flash is about 10 or 15 minutes I'll go ahead and I'll put that infrared light on it right there and uh, let it cook this primer and then block it out and then I'm gonna throw some sealer on it and uh, we'll uh, denib that in the morning and paint this I need to mask this better um, I can't paint this with sheets laying on top of it. It's just the primer, so I'm not sweating that. And, uh, yeah. And I also want to put sealer up on the inside in here, so I'll need to finish cleaning that and make sure all my edges are scuffed good and get sealer on that. Because I'm going to seal this all at once, you know, the whole fender at once. That way, uh, all I have to do is scuff the area that I'm going to put that uh, Rhino liner on, and I can mask the first little bit of this edge here where the uh, where I'm going to paint it. So I'm going to paint the inner lip just a little bit, not much, but just that little uh, flange, whatever you want to call it there. So, all right, guys, uh, I'm going to get that gun cleaned up since it's been sitting about 35 minutes uh, to put those three coats on there. So, sorry about the background noise, but we're going to get that done. And uh, I'll bring you back if I got more. If not, I'll just tag this on to the other video and uh, make it all as one. So, hope you're having a good Saturday, and we'll catch you later. All right, guys. Uh, End of the day Saturday here. Uh, another update video, not a how-to. 
had a bunch of guys stop by today while I was trying to get this done, so I just kind of kept working instead of trying to videotape. I had like three guys here one time, so this is all wet sanded down in 400. Um, I'm going to get all the garbage picked up in here and uh, get things organized a little bit, and I'm going to paint this tomorrow. Uh, it's pretty early yet. I think it's about 3 o'clock, 3.30, but I'm going to call it quits. Uh, I had a migraine last night when I left here, and uh, I basically spent most of my night awake. So um, that being said, I'm ready to uh, just kind of call it quits here. feel pretty good today, but I don't want to push my luck because I do want to be able to paint tomorrow. And... Uh, I'm one of those guys that when I get uh, one of those type of uh, debilitating headaches, um, I better stop what I'm doing because it will get so bad that uh, I can't even function at all. So at any rate, um, enough whining about that. That's all in the past. I'm just a little wore out from last night. Uh, the medicine that you take for them really knocks you down, So, uh, at least for some people. Yeah, so this is ready to go as far as, uh, you know, being sanded. I just need to uh, get it masked up, wiped off, and uh, we'll deal with it uh, in the morning. So that's the driver's side. Um, everything blocked out pretty good. It's drying off. It's still kind of wet. But uh, you can see those gaps. You got a good contrast between the red and the and the gray primer on the fender and a little e coat down there because I I didn't really prime down low because I'm going to seal them um, on the inside. I may not seal this outside uh, only because uh, I don't want to have to deal with the trash tomorrow and cleaning those up again. But I may change my mind. So everything turned out pretty good. Um, I had my one real funky spot in there that you can see where I sanded through to different layers of primer. Dried a little bit different color. Some of this is still wet too, so that should be all right. We should be able to make it with that. At least I hope so, because um, I sanded the dickens out of it. I got a little high spot right here that I kept hitting, and uh, we'll get something over that tomorrow. I got one there. I think I got one there. And I think that's about it for this side. I really did pretty good about not sanding through anything. I just had those couple little high spots that were a little aggravating that were right on the lip um, on that other side. And rather than try and beat on that lip, I'll just live with that tiny little spot. Um, even as critical as I am sometimes. Oh, here we go. Here's another sand through down here. That's a little high spot that was that'll be under the fender flare. So. Uh, you know, those little spots, we can either dust them with some epoxy or some rattle can etch or something like that. Something we don't have to sand. Um, and then we'll go ahead and seal this. I suppose I could probably seal over that too. It's a tiny enough spot. So, alright. I'm babbling. I'm tired. Um, hope you guys are having a great Saturday. And uh, we'll catch up with you tomorrow when this thing's ready to go.